All right, in this short video, I'll give you a couple ideas how you could do forecasting. I've downloaded Walmart, and Walmart's kind of interesting because Walmart appears to have had a change in their growth in more recent years. First thing you should always do is graph your data. And I'm just using the linear data here and to the experienced eye. You can see the growth was probably through this point was smoothly exponential, but it seems to have changed in more recent years. So I might not want to use all this data to try and forecast. There are some options in here. If you go up here and add trend lines, looking at the more trend line options, a linear trend line obviously doesn't fit. That's this dotted line. That's a bad forecaster, and the exponential is probably a little too aggressive. So just looking at this, I think the exponential was fine up until about here. And I'd say from, oh, maybe 2000 forward, maybe Walmart changed their policy. I don't know that for a fact, but I'm just thinking that the past is not the, the from 1975 to 2000 is maybe not as useful in forecasting as it could be. So I might then think about using some different techniques. One thing you can always do is look at the percent change. That divided by that minus 1 will give me a percent change in the dividend and notice that it's really pretty small but you had some really big values through these years you see that percent change is really large in a lot of these years and it's slowed way down in the more recent past. Alright, but one way that you could make a forecast is to just assume that over the long run the percentage change in here let's say going back to this point in time the long run about 22 percent that seems a little rich so maybe I might want to look at the last 15 years and then take the average from say 2001 forward now that's the mean I also might take a look at the last 40 and just use the median the median would be the number that half of them are higher and half of them are lower and that might give me a, a better idea of line of S fit in here. I might simply look at an exponential growth. Let's say going from the last 10 years. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, so in 2006, it was 67 cents. Number of periods, rate, PV, FE, PMT, um, leave that at zero. But if it started at 67 cents and ended at $2 over over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, then I could get the average annual compound growth rate. Ten periods, no intermediate payments, but it was sixty-seven cents. And then it grew, over the ten year period it grew up to two dollars. And that's an 11.5% growth rate. So I can come out with all kinds of different ways of 
forecasting this. Just eyeballing the stuff, the 11 and a half seems reasonable. The 20% does not, and the 15% seems like it's pretty high. So I think I'm going to go with a conservative 11.5%. So if I was going to then forecast my dividends for Walmart, I know what the 2016 dividend is. was $2. If I'm going to use 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021, if I'm going to use 11%, then that times 1 plus 0 0.11, 11% would be the dividend over the next five years. That would be the forecast that I would enter into the spreadsheet. And how I would explain that is that I use the, the compound annual growth rate or the compound average annual growth rate from 2006 to 2016 to make my forecast for the next five years. Okay, and that's one way of doing it. Of course, it depends on the data that you're looking at how you're going to make this forecast. I could have just as easily said I think it's going to go up because it went up four cents, four cents, four cents, but over the next five years it's going to go up four cents each of those years. I could also make that as a forecast. There's no right or wrong answer in here. You just got to have something that you can justify.